Last night's vice presidential debate between Tim Walls and J.D. Vance was very different from the presidential debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, and the polls show that most viewers considered it a draw. But a visibly nervous Walls actually pulled ahead on issues that mattered most with groups of voters that mattered most, and he delivered an unexpected, brutal, last-second knockout blow against Vance on the topic of January 6, elections, and democracy. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have several clips to talk about in this video. Last night, I live streamed the 2024 vice presidential debate between Tim Walls and J.D. Vance alongside my buddy, Luke Beasley. This is a quick recap before we get into really the, the last second unexpected game changer, I think, that helped Walls pull ahead. I do want to show you this clip, this ad which is being cut by Vice President Harris's campaign uh, related to that sequence, related to that exchange between Walls and J.D. Vance, uh, because it's pretty brutal and it kind of sets the stage for what we're going to talk about. It's really rich for Democratic leaders to say that Donald Trump is a unique threat to democracy when he peacefully gave over power, when he peacefully gave over power, peacefully gave over power, peacefully gave over power, peacefully gave over power. It's really so. You can see you can see basically what's coming. So J.D. Vance, of course, lied about January 6th, lied about the 2020 election, refused to answer a direct question, which has ominous implications for what's to come. And Vice President can't Vice President Harris's campaign pounced on this and they're going to cut some pretty brutal ads juxtaposing the dishonesty of J.D. Vance's answer about January 6th and the reality of it. But before we get into the rest of that answer, which, again, that was basically the last question of the debate, and in my opinion, allowed a visibly nervous Walls to pull ahead because he delivered a pretty brutal response to J.D. Vance, and it was unexpected. It was at the last second, and I think it's the thing that most people will remember who watched the debate. Let's get into polling reactions. So CBS uh, did a flash poll after the debate. CBS News VP debate poll shows voter reactions to Vance showdown. In the first and likely only vice presidential debate between Tim Walls and J.D. Vance, voters who watched Tuesday night said it was almost an even match and an overwhelming majority felt the tone of the debate was positive. Who won the debate, Vance or Walls? 42% of debate watchers said Vance won the debate, while 41% thought that Walls emerged as the winner. 17% called the debate a tie. Okay, so there's by one percentage point, people thought that J.D. Vance pulled ahead, which makes sense. If you watch the debate in its entirety, as we acknowledged uh, Luke and I did during the debate live stream. Vance is more polished. Vance is a better debater in terms of performance and confidence and smoothness. And Tim Walls, as reported, was visibly, or excuse me, he it was reported in advance of the debate, days in advance of the debate, that Tim Walls was nervous about the debate because he reportedly told Vice President Harris when she asked him to be his running mate that his big weakness is he's not a very good debater. And certainly in terms of performance, he's not, okay? But he had advantages on the substance, advantages on honesty, advantages on passion with respect to abortion and healthcare and education and democracy. And again, I think that last second knockout blow to Vance helped make it effectively a tie. The tone of the debate, uh, according to 88% of viewers, 88% of them thought it was generally positive compared to 12% who thought it was negative. At the debate, they mostly sounded reasonable, extreme. Walls pulled ahead in terms of reasonability compared to Vance. And, and lower in terms of you know being extreme. So again, advantage to Walls. If needed, are they prepared to be president? 60% say that Walls is prepared to be president. 55% say that Vance is prepared to be president. So again, advantage Walls. On the issues, who did a better job talking about abortion, healthcare, conflict in the Middle East, economy, and immigration? Walls has the advantage on abortion, healthcare. Um, they're tied on conflict in the Middle East. He's pulled slightly behind on the economy and slightly behind on immigration, but otherwise dominates on abortion and health care. So again, to the extent that Walls has the advantage on issues, he has them to a very strong degree, whereas to the extent that Vance has the advantage on the economy and immigration, it's basically within the margin of error. So when Walls succeeds, he dominates. When Vance succeeds, he only does so barely. Opinions of Walls and Vance after the debate. So as you know, J.D. Vance is historically the least liked vice presidential candidate in American history, infinitely less liked than Tim Walls. Well, it improved Vance's favorability, but it also improved Walls's as well. So there's still a seismic gap between gap between them. Excuse me. Before the debate, 52 percent uh, had a favorable opinion of Tim Walls. Now it's 60 percent. That's extraordinarily high. 
unfavorable, people had 41% of them, excuse me, 41% of people had an unfavorable view of Walls prior to the debate, and now only 35, okay? Contrast with Vance, only 40% of viewers thought that that, that had a favorable uh, impression of Vance before the debate, and now only 49. He's still under 50%, right? Even after a pretty damn good performance in terms of debate prowess at this uh, debate. Unfavorable, he went from 54 to 47, okay? So again, as you can see, there's still a seismic gulf between Vance and Walls with respect to favorability, okay? So uh, Politico as well, not to go too far in the weeds, Politico is another reputable source, even though I think they're a bit more conservative than I would like. Flash poll says that uh, Vance and Walls debate to a draw according to Politico's own poll. So with all that in mind, the consensus seems to be Vance is a more polished, extemporaneous speaker. He's a better debater. However, he has he's more dishonest. He had to be fact checked more often. We'll get into the fact checks as well. Um, he is seen as less sincere, um, and so in these other intangibles, uh, Walls pulls ahead, even if in terms of mechanical delivery, Vance has the advantage. The last question of the night was about democracy, January sixth and elections, and this it was again to me where prior to this, if you had asked me who was winning the debate, I probably would have said Vance prior to this question, Vance's response, and how Walls responded to Vance's response. But then this happened, and it was such an illustrative situation. It said a lot about Walls, his passion for democracy, and Vance's you know, just absolute cowardice in the face of Donald Trump and his lack of commitment to democracy. And again, that the fact that this was the final exchange in the debate I think will really pay dividends for Governor Walls. After the 2020 election, President Trump's campaign and others filed 62 lawsuits contesting the results. Judges, including those appointed by President Trump and other Republican presidents, looked at the evidence and said there was no widespread fraud. The governors of every state in the nation Republicans and Democrats certified the 2020 election results and sent a legal slate of electors to Congress for January 6th. Senator Vance, you have said you would not have certified the last presidential election and would have asked the states to submit alternative electors. So I just want to set that premise up by um, uh, Margaret Brennan there. Um, I think that's Margaret Brennan, not Nora, Nora O'Donnell, um, one of the two moderators there. And we're going to get into kind of the tail end of that question and J.D. Vance's response. Vance, you have said you would not have certified the last presidential election and would have asked the states to submit alternative electors. That has been called unconstitutional and illegal. Would you again seek to challenge this year's election results even if every governor certifies the results, I'll give you two minutes. Well, Nora, first of all, I think that we're focused on the future. We need to figure out how to solve the inflation crisis caused by Kamala Harris's policies, make housing affordable, make groceries affordable, and that's what we're focused on. But I want to answer your question because you did ask it. Look, what President Trump has said is that there were problems in 2020, and my own belief is that we should fight about those issues, debate those issues peacefully in the public square, and that's all I've said, and that's all that Donald Trump has said. Remember, he said that on January the 6th, the protesters ought to protest peacefully. And on January the 20th, what happened? Joe Biden became the president, Donald Trump left the White House, and now, of course, unfortunately, we have all of the negative policies that have come from the Harris-Biden. So this is really frustrating. So he said, well, you know, Donald Trump left peacefully. Well, it's just not true, right? So January 20th is not the beginning and the end of the peaceful transfer of power. The peaceful transfer of power begins with the election. Uh, then there's a date in December in which the electors are certified. Then on January 6th of the following year, the electoral college uh, votes are certified by the vice president. And then January 20th is when the end of the peaceful transfer of power occurs. You know, at noon on January 20th, one administration gives way to another. So it's a multi month you know, for a specific date process. And as a matter of fact, you could also say that the entire election season is part of the peaceful transfer of power as well. But at the very least, election day, the date in December where the electors are certified, uh, number uh, three, January 6th, uh, where the electoral college votes are certified, and then January 20th, where uh, the, the former president will leave and the new president walks into the White House. So this idea that, well, sure, there was a violent insurrectionist mob fomented by Donald Trump on January 6th, but at, on that last date, he left the White House. 
No, sir. By definition, you broke, you violated the peaceful transfer of power, or at least your uh, running mate did. And there is no Democrat equivalent to this. And I do want to say, you know, uh, the moderators are referencing a recent appearance by J.D. Vance on the right wing all in podcast in which he said that had he been in Mike Pence's position on January 6, 2021, he would not have certified President Biden's victory. He was asked to not certify it. Sure. So um, would you have certified? I'll ask you for the third. Again, I, I would have asked the states to submit alternative slates of electors and let the country have the debate about what actually matters and what kind of an election that we have. So you in wouldn't have certified states. to be clear. I would have asked the states to submit okay. alternative slates. Right. Of electors. I think that's that's what that's, that's what I would. That is no, I would not have certified the results of the 2020 election. And that is a problem. That's a huge problem. And listen, I understand that. You know, January 6th might not be the highest priority for voters. And I understand that notions of democracy um, don't always pull higher compared to like the economy and immigration. But when you ask people about democracy in the 2020 election and January 6th, they are very hostile to the Republican point of view. They believe that January 6th was uh, gross. It was offensive to democracy. It was uh, a violent, riotous mob. They're not happy about it. They don't approve of it. They don't approve of Donald Trump's involvement and condoning of it. They don't involve with his handling of it or approve of his handling of it. Uh, with regards to the 2020 election, more Americans than not believe that President Biden won the 2020 election. They're upset that Donald Trump hasn't conceded and that he won't shut up about it. Uh, and they do want democracy to continue rather than some sort of right wing authoritarian dictatorship. So again, to the extent that this does matter, it is a dead issue for Republicans. They have no stance on this that is worth redemption. They should just concede that Trump lost the election. Um, but Unfortunately, J.D. Vance will not concede to that point. Because look, when Mike Pence made that decision to certify that election, that's why Mike Pence isn't on this stage. What I'm concerned about is, where is the firewall with Donald Trump? Where is the firewall if he knows he could do anything, including taking an election, and his vice president's not going to stand to it? That's what we're asking you, America. The firewall question is really, really good one. It really is this idea that, hey, listen, you know, if you have a rogue president, it's really important that, um, you know, people who are supposed to be, how should I say, they're supposed to maintain the guardrails. They're supposed to be checks on a rogue president that they actually do their job uh, and stand up to a rogue president. And it seems like J.D. Vance, based on the answers that he's provided, will not do that. And Governor Walls actually asked him point blank. J.D. Vance on the debate stage. And this was the again, the last second brutal knockout blow, which I think deprived Vance of what might have been seen as a widespread victory by asking this question and eliciting this response from J.D. Vance. And it manifested itself because of Donald Trump's inability to say he is still saying he didn't lose the election. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to, that is a damning non-answer. Has she? It is a damning non-answer. It's absolutely insane that a presidential candidate or vice presidential candidate um, would give an answer like that. And we could go on uh, about that. It was like a 10-minute exchange from the beginning of the, the question being posed to the very uh, final uh, exchange between Governor Walls and Senator Vance, I will say, for whatever it's worth, this is one of many instances of undecided voters post-debate being asked about the debate. And this is what an undecided voter, voter in Michigan, a swing state, had to say about that. But the one thing that stuck out to me was Vance's refusal to say whether or not Trump lost the 2020 election. And then also how he kind of said that carbon may not cause climate change and kind of just his refusal to agree with those things that most people. Yeah. So it, it, and I will say Vance's response on climate change was also disastrous. But listen, that again, as far as I'm concerned, that was the moment that took it from Vance pulling ahead in terms of who won the debate to making it effectively a tie um, was a knockout blow delivered by Governor Walls on this. J.D. Vance um, was put in the position where when you ask a direct question like that, you either tell the truth, which risks Donald Trump's wrath, because the truth is the exact opposite of what Donald Trump has publicly persisted, or you give a non-answer to Americans and to people watching, they're like, okay, if this guy loses an election, or if this guy's boss loses the election, um, we have no reason to believe that he will commit to a peaceful transfer of power. It's always a heads I win, tails you lose situation. And I think that's not going to do him any favors whatsoever with the people that he desperately needs 
uh, to win over. You got to remember at the end of the day, there's more widespread support for Vice President Harris and Governor Walls than Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. Um, the MAGA coalition alone is not enough to win the election. So J.D. Vance and Donald Trump have to try to court independent voters. And I think that with his smooth delivery for most of the debate, uh, Vance made more strides in that direction than I expected that he would. But I think he totally undermined all the progress that he made with that disastrous answer on January 6th, the 2020 elections and democracy. So uh, that's where I stand on it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments.